Hello and welcome in this Getting Started videos about Picto. In this series of episodes, we are going to cover a wide range of topics, from mastering the user interface, making the most of the many organizational features of Picto, understanding albums, smart albums, uh, unleashing the power of search, and uh, of course, mastering everything that has to do with videos. Starting to use a new piece of software can be intimidating, and we really designed those videos to help you uh, understand how Picto works, walk you through all the features from the most basics to also some of the most advanced ones, and really help you unleash the power of Picto for your media. In this first episode, we're going to cover the user interface. So we're going to walk you through the dialogues, the panels, the various views, the menus, and really get you familiar with, uh, with Picto and what it does. So let's get started. The main interface in Picto is built around different panels and tools, each with a specific role to make your workflow as smooth as possible. Since we're always working to make Picto even more intuitive and user-friendly, the interface may have changed slightly since we recorded this video. If that's the case, don't worry. A new video will be coming up soon to guide you through the updates. Let's look at the main user interface. On the far left, we have the action bar. This is where you can switch between different views to explore your media, such as the grid, the detail, the map, panorama, and faces. This flexibility allows you to work the way that suits you best. On the left, we have the left sidebar. This left sidebar lists all your volumes and sources connected to Picto. I have some watched folders. I have video albums such as Final Cut Pro libraries. I have Capture One catalogs, Lightroom catalogs. Every time you click on a source, it's going to display those images from that source only. And remember, you can always select multiple sources by using the command key. In this sidebar, you also find the album, either the basic albums that you've created by simply dragging images and videos into an album, or the smart albums that have been created using a query and a set of rules. You also find the editing workspaces that enhance integration with third-party apps, such as Pixelmator Pro, Dixo for the Lab, Luminar Neo, etc. You can toggle the visibility of this panel using the button at the top or using the S key. At the center is the filter panel. You can open it by clicking on any of these six icons in the filter bar. Those icons represent folders, collections, dates, keywords, and faces. By clicking on the folders, for example, I will see a list of all the folders in which the selected source has images on disk. And I can set filters by clicking on those folders. The filter bar that sits above the grid, above the main view, contains some basic filters that I can apply using some really handy controls. For example, I can select all my favorite images or all images above four stars, for example. The timeline widget is another fantastic tool. It shows you the capture date of the images you are exploring, giving you a visual timeline of your media. And it works great with filters. So if I select, for example, my four star images, it will show me the distribution of those images in time. You can easily make that widget visible or invisible using the toggle button in the main toolbar. At the center of it all is the main view. This is where you interact with your media. You can annotate directly from the main view using some of the controls we provide. And you can switch to detail view by simply double clicking on an image or go to map view, panorama or faces. And remember all the things you see in the main view have all the filters applied. So if I'm selecting specific types of images here, the ones with three stars, 
the view reflects the filters, whether I'm looking at panorama, whether I'm looking at the grid. At the very top, we have the main toolbar, which provides some key actions. We've seen already how the toggle buttons can open or close some of the interface elements, but the main toolbar also lets me navigate through the various views and the various filters I've applied in the past. Like in a web browser, I have also access to some statistics about the images that are displayed in the view. And at the center of the toolbar, I have the search field. Whenever you hover over the search field, it displays all the options for your searches. You can search by content, you can search by speech, using a transcript of the dialogues of your videos. You can search by similarity, by drag and dropping an image or browsing an image from disk. You can search by metadata. So any, any metadata you type can be interpreted and you can find images that match a specific criteria based on metadata. Or you can use file information, such as the name, the folder, the extension, to create additional filters. At the far right is the properties panel. This is where you'll find all the details about the selected media, such as metadata, EXIF, and IPTC, AI scores that we compute, and annotations. This is where you can set the title, description, change some of the ratings, flags, favorites, or add keywords. The, you can toggle the properties panel using the button at the top. Picto also comes with a menu bar mode, and it's a perfect solution to synchronize your media seamlessly without disrupting your workflow. Thanks to this feature, your media stays constantly up to date, because even if the main window is closed, Picto will synchronize changes that happen in your catalogs or in your folders. In the background, Picto performs regular synchronization and you can adjust the synchronization frequency to suit your needs. Here, I'm synchronizing every 15 minutes. We also offer some performance mode that control how the hardware is used to perform synchronization or ingestion. Currently, we have four performance modes. Standard for a balanced approach between responsiveness and speed. Slow if you want to minimize the resource usage and priorities some other tasks other than Picto, or fast and turbo if you want to speed up synchronization or ingestion by using almost all your max power. Activating background mode is simple. Simply close the main window and Picto will run in the background. If you need the interface again, click on open or click on the dock and the main interface will be brought up if you quit from this menu, it will quit Picto for real and no more synchronization will happen until the next time it is relaunched. We hope this was uh, useful to you and that you learned new things about Picto. The comments area is really here for you to send us feedback or ask questions and we'll answer them. And also please don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get notified about all the new content that we publish regularly. Thank you and see you in the next episode of this series.